Laptop computer spins onto the screen, opens, and displays ATP Education Program webinar series, closes, and then spins off the screen. Hi, my name is Kelly Key. I'm the Assistive Technology Coordinator in Barrington School District in Barrington, Illinois. I've been in the field of special education for over 25 years as an administrator, special education teacher, and Assistive Technology Coordinator. And I'm excited to share with you our series on helping supporting parents with uh, core vocabulary and communication device use. Um, I think it's critical to make sure the parents are on board from the start. I might talk about that in one of my other series. And helping support them along the way with implementation is critical for device success and communication success for our students. And so I'm excited to share with you today tips for training parents on CORE and AAC. One of the first things that I love to share with other people uh, because they've been so successful are our family fun nights. We do these um, once or twice a year. We try to do it to at least twice a year, um, depending on scheduling. But what we do is we have families come join us at night after, um, after school, after work, and, um, and we just have a really good time. And here are, here's what we do. So the goal of these family fun nights is to gain comfort of their child's device. And we have hands-on activities that they do with us and then that they can then follow through and do at home. So what we do is we invite all families of students with complex communication needs to attend the evening session. And it includes students that use AAC, um, even core based uh, core boards. Uh, it doesn't have to be a high tech device, any type of AAC that's supporting them with communication. So we have the student come, we have siblings join if they're interested, parents, we've had grandparents, neighbors, um, really anybody else that would like to attend is welcome, outside therapists, whoever the parents would like to bring. We do provide childcare for the younger siblings. Um, we have our high school students that need volunteer hours actually come and they will support with um, childcare. And here's what this looks like. Here's some of the things we do. Um, it is the same structure each time that we have our family fun nights, but we have different content and activities that we do. So it'll start off with a short training on a specific pro um, topic at the beginning. And then we do hands-on activities that they then take home. So if you can see in this picture, we're playing a game. They actually then get to take that board game home with them. So um, it's a really nice way to practice while there's people there to help support you and give you tips. And then the parents can take that activity home to do at home. We, another thing that we've done is we have brought in um, several times, we brought Chris Klein, who is an absolutely amazing person. He is an AAC user and um, he, we've had him come in and um, Skype or Google Hangout with us and he's joined and it was, it's been really neat, not only for the parents to talk to Chris and see how successful he is, but then also it's really neat to have our students ask and answer questions. Um, it's been a game changer. So that's another um, option you could do. So here's what the agenda looks like. This is an example of one of ours. Um, so the schedule on the left here shows the first half hour. Um, this particular one, the topic was just a core overview and sharing some partner skills tips. And then I shared uh, some visual supports that parents could then take home and use. And then we have breakout sessions, and we usually have three breakout sessions, and parents can choose two to go to. Um, at this night, we had a game activity, so all parents got a cord out game, and um, we all, like I said, then they got to take it home. And we've even made some different scripts to go with the students' uh, devices to help support them on knowing what to help model. Then we usually have a literacy activity. So all parents then um, get that same book and they get to take it home. And we talk about um, shared reading and how to help support your students to make sure that they're really engaging and um, interacting with the book and communicating with them. And then, um, then usually we have some other type of activity. This particular one was talking with toys. So they got um, a toy and I think it was, this particular one was a wind up toy. So it was age appropriate for all students. And um, the parents actually, we had them fill out a form of some of the things that they could model while they were playing with that toy with their child. And then we practiced. 
Here's just some of the training topics that we've provided, AAC overview, um, partner skills or modeling tips, how to model during specific activities that they're doing regularly at home, providing wait time, providing a prompt hierarchy, talking about AAC and literacy, and so much more. <laughs> Um, and then another thing that we started doing just last year, um, we started doing a monthly virtual parent support group. So this is a different uh, support group, and this has been an amazing addition to our parent support. The goals to this are that um, have parents make connections with other parents of students that use AAC. So we do provide some training, but our ultimate goal, our main goal is to help parents support parents and make connections. But also um, even just building the relationships then between the teacher and the speech and language pathologist and the, and the parents in the district. And then, of course, incorporating some training on AAC skills and knowledge. And support the growth of, of the group wisdom among participants regarding their AAC experiences. So having parents help parents. It's really neat to see and hear some of the tips that parents have for other parents versus just um, coming from the, the SLPs and the teachers in the building. So the parents participate via Zoom. We all do it via Zoom. And we generally try to offer two sessions each month on the same topic. So the same topic each month, or same topic once a month, and then we change the topic the following month. But um, then parents have the option to join. We try to make it around their lunchtime. And then we try to make another session after dinner. So they can choose to join one of those. They are one hour sessions. And prior to, we sent a survey out at the beginning of the year to determine the topics for the school year. And again, here are some of the topics that we've gone over. Here's what the structure looks like. So it always starts off with introductions. Parents share their name and any information they want to share about their child. They can choose to share it or not. And then we usually have an icebreaker question because we really want to help gain comfort with parents and being able to share information and talk with the group. So it's something that has nothing to do with AAC, like what's your favorite restaurant or what's your favorite takeout place in the area? We do then go over some group guidelines. And then we have a short topic training um, on a certain topic for 15 to 20 minutes that the staff provides. And then the next part is that community building and group wisdom. So we give time for parents to ask questions and share experiences. We encourage other parents to offer suggestions as opposed to the expert model. And then wrapping up, we do have some final thoughts and then talk about the next meeting date and topic. Another thing we do are individual family trainings. When um, we are individualizing devices for students, then of course we provide trainings, whether it's virtual or in person for parents. Um, and the structure after the set meeting or any additional um, time they need support uh, will look like this. So we have a minimum of two training sessions that we do right after the set meeting. Um, but again, we provide trainings anytime that it's needed for parents if they want a one-to-one -one, um, training just for them, um, for their particular child. But this is what it looks like when it's the structure after the set meeting. Well, we provide an overview of their child's device, an overview of partner skills tips. We share tips for home use. And then we have hands-on exploration of the device. The next session, we start out with updates from home and school. This is, it's so great to hear, you know, how things are going, um, what particular things that, you know, how are they using it at home? What questions do they have? How's it going? And then to then for the parents to hear how it's going at school. And we also share um, a lot of videos of the students as well. We answer questions the parents have, and then we do a lot more hands-on practice at this point. And then on the right here, you'll see this communication device guide. So we have a, um, I put together a device guide for each student. It usually goes with their low tech backup. And during the trainings, what I do is they have this 
um, these sheets in person, but also I create Google slide, a Google slide presentation that goes with it. And it includes videos of their child using their AAC and also then staff modeling on their device, which is nice for parents to see. So we go, you can see this, I go through this at the trainings that, you know, the rationale behind the device, uh, the setup of the device, the priorities when it comes to communication and target vocabulary. Sometimes it's very overwhelming for parents. So it's nice to be able to um, have some specific areas um, or targets. We also talk about from the set meeting, what are the tasks that we go over the task portion of the set? What specifically do you want the student to be able to communicate that they're not? And um, we make sure we explore all of those vocabulary words, tips on helping support the student and being a great communication partner, specific tips for home and during certain um, things that they can use the device for that are built into the routine. So it's not so overwhelming for them. Um, we have some additional tips and programming. Um, so we go over programming a little bit and then, uh, you know, set some priorities and um, go over the next session. Another thing that we started doing last year, um, actually two years ago because of the pandemic, is this individual family coaching via Zoom. And this has been a game changer. Um, it's So let me share with you a little bit how that looks. Uh, we generally do two or more sessions and we do virtually while the parents are at home. So prior to the first session, parents send in videos. This has been amazing to actually see videos of them and their child at home while there's communication breakdowns and for us to kind of help um, look at that and see what we can do and how they can use their AAC to support them. Then the first session, the team comes up with tips and ideas and we meet via Zoom to share ideas. And then the second session, which we usually do um, during institute days, or if the child is in early childhood, we um, will schedule it when the child is at home the other half of the day. Um, so the second session, parents pick an activity that they do, re they do regularly at home. They, and then they do the activity while we are on Zoom with them. And we coach the parents while they're doing the activity. And we also welcome siblings as well. So parents have really enjoyed this. They feel like they've really benefited from it. And we love getting the videos from the parents of um, specific scenarios at home and um, seeing those communication breakdowns and how we can support them. We also have parent group trainings. So we'll have parents come in during the day and train them while their child is at school. Um, so the goal of this is to gain comfort of their device and um, use and modeling through hands-on practice. So it usually starts off with an overview and hands-on practice, or the structure of it usually is an overview, hands-on practice, and then question and answers session, of course. And it, this is after their in individual one-to-one -one trainings on their particular child's device. Again, it's a nice way for parents to be able to see other parents, but then also for us to be able to train so many parents at one time. Again, it's during the day without their child, so their child is in class, and it's usually the teacher and the speech and language pathologist that help facilitate it with myself, the AT coordinator. And the parents leave with tip sheets um, and activities, as well as the confidence. And then another thing that has been great is I will pre-record videos to send home. Other team members have done this as well. And um, I rec record them via Zoom and share them either through a YouTube link or a Google Drive link. I always make sure they are 30 minutes or less um, for my longer ones. And I do a lot that are two minutes or less, just little key partner skill tips or um, how to utilize a device or programming tips. And then they're great to add to your newsletter as well, which is something that I will talk about in my resources for parents section. And those are some tips for training parents. I hope you have some great ideas and that you can utilize and thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. For more information on the ATP education program, please visit our website at atp.nebraska.gov.
forward slash education or email us at atp.education at nebraska.gov.